Welcome to the Mindful Making podcast. This is episode number 18 and you are here with me in Hornsby Heights, north of Sydney in Australia. My name is Jane and you can find me on Instagram as Mindful Making. That is also the name of a, my page on Facebook. On Ravelry, you can find me as Mindful Making AU. I also have an Etsy shop with that name. So that's where you can find me online. But here we are to talk about knitting, mainly, and also about reflections in this time, challenging time of COVID-19. Yes, uh, we are still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today is April the 25th, I think, and uh, it's been four weeks since I recorded the last episode and we have basically been staying at home during that time. So in this episode you will, yes, see knitting. There will also be few films from my walks around the the area where I live and um, when we are staying home I think we have all done a bit more cooking we've also done baking so I will share with you how I make the Danish rye bread if you're interested in that if you're not you just skip over that part and then towards the end I thought that this time also at least it's done for me giving me the opportunity to reflect and also reflect on yes the challenges but also the privileges uh, and the opportunity just to slow down and um, being mindful of what is and I, I thought I would share some of their reflections towards the end I hope you are well and uh, that you are coping with the lockdowns and the situation that we're in. Grab a cup of coffee, a tea or water like I have and um, cozy up for half an hour with me. I hope you will enjoy that finished objects so in during the last four weeks I have been knitting a lot I did have a period where my mojo sort of disappeared but then I started doing this uh, shawl or scarf that was a knit along with or started by the Danish designer Annette Danielson. So every day on Instagram, she posted a new section and uh, we could knit that. I started a few days into the knit along. I think I need just to see what it's all about before I jump in with both, both feet. And uh, this is then my version. I decided to start with or to work from this main section, which is then a uh, hand-dyed yarn by Circus Tonic, ha Tonic Handmade that I have used. So I've used then the leftovers from my Timely cardigan. Um, and then I found accompanying um, red, blue colors uh, that would work well with this yarn. So I'll just show you the different sections. So the main, or this is, was the starting section with this hand dyed yarn. And then I've used mostly um, coast yarn, which is cotton wool blend from um, Holst. Uh, in these sections here, so this one is single stranded, so it's slightly, uh, I think lighter weight than the, um, instructions called for it's worked on needle size 3.5 and I did that um, so moving into a more darker color and as you can see the the structure and the texture of each each section changes which was very interesting so you in this one you picked up stitches here from the 
from the starting triangle. So every time you would pick up stitches and then moving into leaf pattern, the blue section here. And then into this beautiful, I like this one very much, that section. So it's just an interesting construction. And as I said, I think it works really well as a scarf. I don't think I probably I will use it more as a scarf than a um, than a shawl. But it is called uh, um, directly translated together apart shawl. The instructions are available on her website. They are in Danish only. I did ask her if she wanted to. Uh, have a translation or have it translated into English but uh, that is just available in Danish if you want to knit it I'm happy to help um, then another finished object that I also talked about in the last episode um, is the Albion sweater by Brooklyn Tweed that I've done for my son and where he wanted it to be redone and there was a hole in that as well um, so I will now insert a video that will take you through what I did in terms of unraveling that and I hope you will enjoy and I'll see you back after that. So my son wanted this Albion sweater. He wanted to make it shorter. It should be shorter and then just plain stocking it here up to here so what I will do today is to rip this back and also get rid of this hole here so I will rip it back and um, start to redo the body of this jumper for him so I'll just have to find the end here and then I will start to unravel. After much trouble and cutting off the ribbing and trying to rip from down up, I figured the jumper was knitted bottom up. That means I had to unravel up down. So um, I thought better secure the stitches um, where I would start knitting from again. So I'm picking up stitches along this horizontal line of pearl um, bumps here. And I'm almost towards the end and I pick up the left leg of the knit stitch. I don't know whether this is the right one but um, if it isn't I'll just um, do a you know knit through the back loop but at least the knit stitches are secured. So I thought I would show you how I pick up the stitches. So I have chosen this horizontal line of pearl stitches and I would then go into the left leg of the knit stitches above that like this so over the right leg and under the left leg hopefully that will work Try right, again, left. At least I then have the stitches secured. When I start to unravel. And now they are separated. So the top section is separated from, from the body. So hopefully I can now start to easily unravel, hopefully. And 
And now Anders' Albion sweater is ready to be repaired and redone. And I will do that this evening, sitting on the couch and watching some TV and just um, getting started. So I've put in a progress keeper here at the side seam and then I will just go down and use these unraveled reused yarn So the Albion sweater for my son is finished. I haven't done the sleeves yet. I think I will redo the sleeves as well on that one. Um, but it's just to show that you can repair and reuse good yarn and make it a sweater that you love. What is on my needles? At the moment I have two projects ongoing. So one of them, if you follow me on Instagram, you would see a little, many pictures of this. It is the, I can't even remember the name. It is the Koi Viewer, maybe, by Boyle and by Caitlin Hunter. I'm doing this one. Koivia. Koivia by Caitlin Hunter. And uh, I am using the coast yarn as well. So the gauge is off. I think the pattern uh, says 21 stitches and I am 25 stitches on 10 centimeter. So of course my yarn is much thinner. Uh, the pattern also called for a four millimeter I'm working on a 3.75 I think or and a 3.5 millimeter but this is the jumper so far so I was a bit worried about the fit so I'm doing uh, I am doing size large instead of size medium to get the fit uh, right and to get the size right because of my different the different gauge what happens though is when the well the um, the stitch count but also the row count changes so I can see from my version here compared to um, the pattern is that my pattern sections are quite shrunk so in this I know it's a black and white picture to see if I can show you the um, color work on the body sits further down than mine does and is um, longer. So here this section is shorter and that but that means that I've got more on the textured body as well. So trying it on and I will insert a picture of uh, it, the the sweater on. I think it works well with having more of of this section in the body down here. So it's a beautiful texture and beautiful color work. And I am using um, two coast two strands of the coast yarn in color lead which is the darker color and skylight which is the um, brighter and the um, the lighter color as you can see I am on the sleeves but I am just um, waiting for nine inch needles because this doing color work and um, together with magic loop doesn't work for me it's too
cumbersome. So um, I'm just. This is just uh, waiting in my by back until I get uh, the needles. They are in back order, so I'll have to be patient. But I think the fit is good. I like that it's a lighter weight jumper. Also because of the double stranded um, color work. So I like that part. Another uh, project on the needles is my super simple summer tea that I have started again. This is just knitting in the round, easy going. So I have come to separating four sleeves. So this is working really well. As you can see, I have, you can see that this yarn down here has only been knitted once. These up here have been knitted a few times, but I hope that will settle with, um, with a bit of steaming. But the color is just divine. So I am working with a lace weight yarn from Glenhaven Knits. It's a luxurious yarn with super fine merino and silk and yak. Uh, is it yak? It's just, I have talked about this mixture. It is Decadence Lace Superwash 25 micron merino and 45% silk. So merino and silk. Uh, 800 meters per 100 gram and I hope to be able to finish um, this with just in just one skein just a short sleeve and I have this much left of the skein will be interesting to see how cropped it will be <laughs> But I'm really enjoying that. That's it's a super easy. It's just knitting round and round and round. Um, so it's ideal for watching TV. And uh, this is my um, this is my Excel spreadsheet. If you can see that, with a few numbers on it. Yeah. So um, easy peasy for now. Let's see when that, if ever. That will become a pattern as well. I hope so. So that is what is on my needles at the moment. Um, I just like that it's easy. I can just pick it up and knit a few rounds in the evening. Otherwise, when I'm at home, um, we have um, done a bit of baking. So now I will just insert a short video of how I do, I make Danish rye bread. It's four minutes long. If you don't want to watch it, skip four minutes ahead and I'll be back.
I hope you enjoyed that bit of a uh, baking video. Um, we bake a Danish rye bread every approximately every week and it's just it's just beautiful with a bit of butter and cheese on it. Um, so we love that in our family. Uh, during last week I got a happy mail so I got um, well yes I acknowledge I'm late to the party but I got this book yay so 52 weeks of sock knitting you know I'm not that much of a sock knitter to be honest but I just knew from all the pictures that I I would need to have this book which is a just a beautiful the layout is just beautiful like all the Lena magazines uh, so I thought I need to have this book as well I haven't decided which socks to make first uh, I tend to go for the simpler ones to be honest um, but I have started to looking for yarn I don't have that much um, sock yarn in my stash but what I was thinking was that I might use some of of the um, wool yarn that I have and just strand it with a an alpaca to give it a bit more uh, strength so I might do that and that leads me to that I've bought yarn lately which I shouldn't but uh, there was an offer that I couldn't resist so <laughs> I ordered I ordered six kilos of yarn yeah it is a lot and I have them standing here on the table so I can see them and I will just show you one by one so they are all cones so 500 grams cones and they are all 100% lamb's wool from um, Holzgarn in, De in Denmark. It's the uh, super soft yarn. So this is a beautiful red color. And I will use this yarn to make uh, uh, ornaments for the Christmas tree. So it will be woolen felted hearts. So that's that and then a black, regular black, my husband has ordered just a black jumper. So that will, I will start working on that at some point. So black and this was, there was an offer with 20% off so, um, uh, so I jumped on that opportunity. A beautiful blue, light blue one. And in addition, this color. So the light one is called Iced. It has beautiful, sort of, it's not speckled, but just tonal in light and a bit darker blue in it. And the same with this one, sort of bit of gray undertone. And this one is called Glacier. So I can just imagine these two together. It would be lovely. Another one is, uh, which is traditional gray. This is the flannel gray, which is just ideal for the men uh, in my family. They love a good gray jumper. So my husband was also talking about combining these two into a bit of a color work se session or section in a jumper for him so that was the gray and then finally a color that I completely fell in love with which is this one so it is green but it has sort of tones of grey and blue in it as well it's just absolutely beautiful and it's called sage blue I hope you can see these beautiful
colors green and blue and gray in this yarn. I think it's amazing. And then coming back to socks, I might try doing a sock in one of these yarns as well and then combine it with a, um, an alpaca. I, this one is currently my favorite color, this green one. Plenty to do. Plenty to do. I even bought two of these, the green one. So those are my yarn purchases. Plenty of plants and uh, this is 100%, uh, these yarns are 100% wool. Smell of sheep. And they can be a bit sort of uh, rustic, but they just soften up so beautifully when they are washed and the wool just blooms. So I can't wait to start knitting with those as well. And it will be a probably on a 3.5, 375 millimeter and just a, a, a weight that suits this climate very well, both for indoors and outdoor use. So we love that very much in the neighborhood. Yeah. It's beautiful autumn and autumn here in Australia is 20, 25 degrees. It gets chilly in the evenings, so um, we sleep very well. <laughs> and it's just a clear sky. So um, I hope you will enjoy the next few minutes, which is taking you out for walks in the um, local neighborhood. Hello, everyone. I am just out on a walk. It's a beautiful Saturday. And I'll try to show you behind me. You can see there is a bit of water. And there's also water to the other side, if you can see that. Down there. It's just beautiful out here. So that is still what we can do while we are staying at home, just keeping the physical distance. and. Uh, we have to stay motivated and do a bit of exercise to stay mentally fresh and uh, keep up the good spirit and the mood up. So I'm out on a walk, it's probably 8k walk or something, so uh, I hope you will. Bye bye! back I hope you enjoyed those few walks and um, as I said I have now been working from home and I've done that for the last six weeks I think and I really enjoy it I enjoy that I don't have to jump on a train every morning and the rush to get out of the house I can even fit in a walk or a run in the morning. Um, so I really, really, really enjoy that. 
and you know with things slowing down it just makes me reflect a bit and I thought I would share some of those reflections with you and if that's not for you I I'm you you're welcome to um, you know skip towards the end and leave now and I've enjoyed having your company if you want to stay on um, I will grab my knitting and just share a few reflections with you so with not having to commute and we are staying at home all our um, sort of obligations in terms of sport and other things have stopped or paused we've just had the we've just stayed home and i've we've just had long evenings where we could just sit chat and we're sort of back to basics so doing nice dinners, having time to go for a walk in the morning or in the afternoon, being home at a decent time, make dinner at a decent time, and we're all there around the dinner table, not having to warm up food for kids that come home late after sports. And it just makes me realize how privileged we are and how good it is to have a bit more time. So we are starting contemplating what we want to get back, have back into our lives when it all returns to normal again. And I have realized how important it is for me to, to calm down and just not rushing from one thing to the other and not having so much on the agenda and so much planned out for me that white space to think to reflect and just to be is very important so i found myself the other day just looking at the sky and just looking at this beautiful white cloud in against the the blue sky and very clear sort of drawing or line from the sky towards the um, or from the clouds towards the sky and I, I think I spent five ten minutes just watching this cloud change and that was just a bit of you know healing and then I thought is that really normal and yes, I think absolutely that's normal. We have just forgotten how normal it is. And that is to be completely immersed in the small wonders of life and nature. And it is to be mindful of the small changes and curious and actually just see and not just rush from one thing to the other. So that's some of the things that I've been reflecting over that I feel so privileged and I know that I still have my job, I don't have financial worries, so in that sense I fully acknowledge how privileged I am, but this COVID and lockdown it's really an opportunity to be grateful for what is and being grateful for the family, being grateful for good meals, being grateful to be able to go for a walk um, and also appreciative of the simple things. So that is what I'm, I'm taking out of this is a thank you for the opportunity just to tune back in to the essentials and getting back to basics. So I thought I would just share that with you. Um, maybe you feel the same. Let me know in the comments box uh, what you have, you know, flicked it on. What have you been working on knitting wise? Have you started doing something that you didn't do before? Have you stopped doing something? What does your new normal look like? I will be keen to hear. Otherwise, I hope you've done, have 
had a chance to do a bit of knitting and have enjoyed the last approximately half hour with me. And I am looking forward to see you back here again. I hope you will give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Press the bell so you would get notified when there is a new uh, video up. I strive to do one every month. Otherwise, I will leave you with that. Send me your comments and I, um, I'll see you back soon. Bye bye everyone.